Hi everyone, Jack here. Uh, before the episode starts, I just want to take a moment to thank some of our patrons for making all of this possible. Thank you to Nicola James, M. Mosin, Samantha Shea, Jonathan Humard, Alti, Morgan Patterson, Theo Hendry, Jace Pastris, Ali Science, Juno, Jan Aloni, Dylan Beauchamp, Aaron Subbo, Iris Newlin, Connor Fox, and Adrian Frisbee. Your support means a lot to us. And now, on with the episode. Roger, I do have to hand it to you. You've done some fine work here today. This is ridiculous. Mm? You mind speaking up, Aster? It's a little difficult to hear you when you're off muttering to yourself in a corner. I said this is ridiculous. Hardly two weeks ago, the machine was so broken it was barely operational. And it was broken because it had killed someone. I think Mix Algernon had more to do with that than the machine did. Regardless, it shouldn't be anywhere near the level of functioning you claim it is. And yet, it is. Anything is possible with a good engineer and some elbow grease aster. Your good engineer has been struggling to untangle wires for most of your time here. Just because you don't understand mechanics doesn't mean you have to take it out on poor Roger. And you make it sound as though we had anything to do with the sorry state of the old girl. May I remind you that it was your engineer that caused this whole mess in the first place? And may I remind you that it was his dealings with you that led to it? Well, whether you like it or not, trial testing is going to happen, come hell or high water. It's simply the inevitable march of scientific progress. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. And what about Jules? Miss Krober seems absolutely lovely, but need I remind you, she agreed to the plea deal. She knows what she's in for. Unfortunately, discomfort is a sacrifice we must make in times like this. The machine isn't safe. Seeing as you feel so strongly about it, why don't you just take her place instead? After all, Roger here knows his way around the machine just fine. I don't think we'd need you mentally present for this round of testing. I Unless don't. you'd like me to just go ahead and have the guards call Mix Algernon and Miss Crower instead. No, that won't be necessary. There's a good man. Why are we using our lunch hour to go to the library? It smells like an old lady's house, whose grandkids don't call her enough, and who has two cats that have tried to eat her in her sleep. You didn't have to come, you know. You asked me to! Shh! I, I assumed it was important. I'd argue the gaining of knowledge is pretty important it's today. It's a miracle that you haven't gotten pummeled for the crime of being a massive smartass. It must be my vibrant and compelling personality. Hold on. I think this is it? Yeah, th that's it. Can you hold this for a sec? Ugh! An introduction to mechanical engineering? And aerospace engineering? What are you doing with these? What do you think I'm doing? I'm reading them. I mean, yeah, obviously, but why? I always wanted to learn. And, uh, it just so happens that the new engineer guy, Roger, was desperate enough to figure out Warren's terrible handwriting that he said he would show me some shit. So, I'm taking advantage of it while I got a chance. You sure that's a good idea? The last engineer already tried to kill me? Don't think it can get much worse than that. You know what? That's fair. Speak of the devil. 
You are one hard man to find, let me tell you, Victor Algernon. I've been practically tearing this place apart looking for you. Me? Man? Who else? We've got important work to do. Must be pretty damn important if you came and found me yourself. I didn't want to waste time with the guards wandering around aimlessly. It was easier to track you down myself. Now walk with me. My... Jules, can you check out those books for me? Yeah, sure. Good luck out there, soldier. Move quickly, Mix Algernon. You're gonna need it. Yeah. <sighs> What's so important about today, anyway? Well, thanks to Roucher's diligence and speed in undoing the damage that you and Dr. Kane did to the lab equipment, we're moving exactly in accordance with my schedule, meaning the machine is functional enough for testing and we'll be able to start today. What? With any luck, I believe we might actually make some real progress today, instead of sitting around twiddling our thumbs. Hopefully, from this particular session, we'll be able to make further improvements to the equipment, as well as make it more precise. Is is, is no one going to be on the other's end? Oh, heavens no! Your little solo endeavors were fine and all, but it's nothing compared to some actual data from another living brain, especially where your interactions with the memories of others are considered, and especially with the direction I am hoping to guide your research. Our research. Meaning... What is worth knowing, Mixalgernon, is always worth weaponizing, too. Come, come. That's not what I would... Wait. Who else is in there? Not not Jules, right? I mean, what do we... What the hell is going on? Vic, please don't be concerned. Why is he sitting there? Believe it or not, our dear doctor volunteered himself in Miss Kroper's steed. Isn't that just fabulous? Like I would ever believe that Vic, fucking... she's telling the truth. I, I, you... you... No, you you can't be okay with this. If it means no one else has to be in this chair, then yes, I am. Dr. Calvin is more than capable of taking readings for me to process and explain to her later. I mean, yeah, I just... I hate to interrupt this conversation, but I am going to need you to take a seat, Mix Altronon. What what if I kill you? Like, like what what I did to Warren, what, what then? You won't. You don't know that. I do. How are you so goddamn calm? Whatever happened before was a freak accident performed with a machine that was rigged specifically to do harm. I know the data. I I know your mind. I trust that we're going to be okay. Mix, Algernon. I heard you the first time. Have we all calmed down now? Fabulous. Roger, count us in, will you? Electrical pulse sent in five, four, three, two. <sighs> Shit. Hux. Uh, Huxley. Is there a goddamn mask here? Hello. Hello. Just. Okay. Sorry, I, I didn't even see you. I just woke up. Is this what your place is like? Like back on Earth? How would I have lived somewhere with no doors or windows, Vic? Point taken. Uh, Sorry. This is... Besides the doors, it does bear a lot of resemblance to my old apartment. But I didn't have as much clutter, I don't think. Yeah, this is uh, a lot of shit. Nothing around the piano, though. Like a dead zone. You play? No. I don't. Oh. So... Where do we start? Uh, I guess we gotta find the way in. What do you mean? Uh, like a, uh, you know when you go to like a hotel, and you have to find the lobby on the bottom floor, but there's always like another way up to all the rooms. Yes. It kind of feels like that. Like we're just in the lobby of your mind. Huh. Yeah, I, I don't really know how else to explain it. I know brains are kind of your thing, but it's different once you're actually in here. So, how do we get in? Usually, it it, it just kind of happens when you start thinking about stuff. You feel, like, I don't know, compelled towards anything? 
That bookshelf on the wall across from us. That's where we need to start. All right. After you, then. Jesus, this must go on for miles. How is this just your memory? If I were to venture, I guess, the further back we go, the more obscure it becomes. Our minds are constantly being forced to recall information, and obviously not everything is going to be equally important. When you're constantly processing information, some things are going to be pushed to the wayside in order to make room for more immediately useful information. Thus, seeing as this is the lobby, where we are standing right now must be the most prominent memories. And further down? I'd imagine it gets rather murky, yes. Ah, gotcha. So, we're picking from the greatest hits, then? That's certainly one way to refer to my most influential memories, yes. I uh, forgot this is, uh, this part is all kind of new for you. Vic. Yeah? I'm not sure what we're going to see today, but in any case, I sincerely hope you don't think any less of me for it. I'll... I'll keep that in mind. Just pick something, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Upon a recommendation, of faculty here by confers... You graduated from MIT? For undergrad, yes. Huh. Did you skip out on graduation or something? No. Why do you ask? Because this feels weird. Uh, almost like it didn't happen. Like, look around, all the colors are weird and faded and everything's blurry. Oh, I suppose this is just how I always saw this memory. Why's that? One of our youngest doctoral candidates to date, Huxley. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yes, that's why. Or, yeah, at least I am. Really surprised about the baby genius thing. They seem like the kind of person who didn't have a lot of friends your own age. I... I had plenty of friends. Does that count teachers? No. Or? No, it's not counting Excuse teachers. Excuse me, fellow youth, but I found that your work on our group project completely fails to meet my incredibly high 11-year-old standards. Because of this, I will now be commandeering this presentation. <laughs> yeah? No. Huh? I... You thought it was funny. I didn't sound like that. Yeah, but you thought it was, like, a little funny. Maybe. Maybe I thought it was a little bit funny. Yeah, knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. When did you graduate? Uh, I, I didn't. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that you... No, no, no. no. It's, it, it's, it's okay. It's not like you knew or anything. It was never going to be for me anyway. I, I like the idea of school, but my sister could barely afford to go on scholarship. Better if I didn't, you know? It looks like they're taking your picture over there now. Looks like it. Not for nothing. It's a nice dress. I think I'm done with this memory now. Should I just, mm -hmm. I don't know, close the book? It worked. This is working. And no one has brain damage. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. I hate to interrupt the celebrations, but we do need to move forward with the experiment. That was good, but didn't give us nearly enough data for us to fully test the equipment's capabilities. So, what? Pick another memory? Precisely, yes. Very well. Thank you. You can choose again. Pick any of them. Any of them? I guess you're kind of an open book. Funny. Seriously, though, are you sure you're okay giving me so much power in here? It's it's your head. I'd take far too long to decide on one, and I think that if it were in my hands, I wouldn't show anyone anything. If I let you choose, I can't hold anything back. It's better for us. For, uh, the experiment. Alright, let's see what we got. New dinner for two cookbook. Cute. It was was a gag gift from where how do we oh, I'm never gonna get used to that swanky, swanky kitchen, kitchen. The swanky, swanky tie, tie. Yeah. looks like something, something my, dad my dad would wear, wear. you didn't, you didn't like, like break in and raise his closet, closet did, you? did you that, that wasn't me, me. <laughs> I like this tie 
And how would I break in? I don't even know where you live. Huxley! You always you this always pedantic. pedantic. You know, if you're going to just keep teasing me, I can always send you on your way. No, come on. I'll take you home, I promise. I'll introduce you. Are you sure this whole thing isn't just a ruse so I can seal your father's ties? Astrid, Astrid this, this is, is serious. serious. Vic? I... What are you doing here? What the hell is going on in here, Hux? What was that? Wh whose voice was that? Wh whose clothes am I wearing? Why are we here? I'm not telling you that. I don't have to. We're getting the data we need. I'm not telling you that. And normally, I I'd respect that. But right now, we're sitting at a candlelit dinner for two in your brain. I'm not taking weird KG shit. This is a good memory, isn't it? Like, I was having a good time before I got possessed by the ghost of Huxley's past. You were? I mean, as much fun as you can have when digging through the most vulnerable parts of the human mind, yeah. It's nice. The dinner, the music. Huh. So what are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. Aren't of... you? This is just... Yes, it's a good memory. One of the best. But it... I think it could go wrong very quickly. The longer we stay here, the longer you stay here. What's that supposed to mean? Sometimes the present and past need to stay separate. Presence. Hmm. Like, uh, like Nemesine. How do we get out of here? Back to the bookshelf. Aster... I think we need to go. What, why are you actually here? ANA award-winning researcher Aster Huxley is set to stand trial tomorrow after reports have surfaced... We still don't know exactly what happened, but last week the judge agreed to reopen an investigation into Aster Huxley in light of new evidence that we still don't know exactly what happened, but last week the judge agreed to reopen an investigation into Aster Huxley... You're facing trial for fraud, Doctor. Just fraud. But you know and I know, they could charge you with more than that any day now. Bare minimum, you're looking at getting your license revoked. I didn't mean for any of this... I didn't mean for this to happen. Huxley? No, no, of course not. You would never. Sometimes we hurt people without ever really meaning to. That's the reason for the kind of sentence you'd be up against. Or the way the press has been treating you lately. I don't know. The press may have a point. Well, maybe. That's why we have an opportunity for you. A deal. We've worked it out with the judge already. Nemesine program. I'm... I'm assuming this isn't referring to the lab upstate. It's a little further up than that. Don't worry, though. It's not a sentence. It's a job offer. I'm not sure how I feel about living off-planet. You'll be able to lay low, do some public good, write a paper or something. Give everyone down on Earth some time to forget about the last few months. And I'll bet you anything there'll be a nice, cushy hospital job waiting for you when you get back. I'm not sure that's true. What are your other options, Aster? Where do I sign? Hux. Huxley. Are you good? You, you back with me? Yes, I'm... Why is there so much shit in my apartment? Because it's not your apartment. Oh, right, um... Yeah, yeah, I, I just... What happened back there? When you signed the contract? What about it? You've always made it sound like you just took a job offer. Responded to a listing in the paper or something. I did. From what I saw, I, I don't think they hired you out of the kindness of their hearts. It's a prison, Victor. Kindness isn't part of the mission. What exactly do they keep in prisons, Aster? They're keeping you here. It's only a job. A job you didn't want. We're done here. Honestly, Aster, we've barely been at it for an hour. We've got some scans, sure, but I'd like to try a few more paths to see I if I said we... we're done. This doesn't seem a touch over dramatic to you at all. I'm going back to my quarters. Call me when you need to interpret the data. Well, I suppose that concludes today's trials. I apologize for wasting your time, Mix Algernon. I'll have someone show you back to your cell. Great. Would someone come let me out of this goddamn chair, then? You look terrible. Jesus hey, Christ, why are you hiding under Hugo's bed? Because the guard was coming, obviously. That still doesn't answer my question. She's here because I let her in, Vic. 
there's something important we need to discuss <sighs> as a group. All right, fine. What is it? And why couldn't it happen back in the rec room? <laughs> are, are we planning our escape back to Earth? Guys, I was, I was joking. Well, we're not going to do it, not unless you agree. <laughs> My death wish days are barely behind me. I started looking forward to living like, I don't know, yesterday. It's not guaranteed you die, just uh, almost guaranteed. Vic, I flipped through some of those books you had me check out. I don't know a lot about engineering, but I do know that if you can understand that stuff in the book, our chances are a hell of a lot better. And it's not my first time breaking out of something, and Hugo's like some kind of freak criminal mastermind. Oh, thank you, dear. Don't push your luck. What I'm saying is, I can't force you to want to join or anything like that, but, but you told me it's better to try than just sit around and hope things change. If we do that, I think they're just going to change for the worst. Lucy is just the beginning of it, you know? We need to take this shit into our own hands. There's, there's barely anything here worth saving except ourselves. You're right. We're all we've got. So, you're in? Yeah. Let's get the hell out of here while we still got a chance. All right, no turning back now. So, step number one. We need a fun team name. Today's episode was written by Stanford Blue. It featured Leland Heed as Victor Algernon, Varus Zima as Aster Huxley, Serena Johnston as Jules Krober, Finn Carter as Roger Morris, Noelle Salisbury as Lucy Calvin, E.G. Taraku as Hugo Highsmith, and Alex Goldman as Isaac Huxley. Our ensemble this week was Sean Tobogan Flowers, Adrian Frisbee, B. Holt, M.J. Scott, and Luca Horvath. Our editor is Stoker Leopold, and our music is by Sloan Van Dyke. If you like what we do here and want to follow us on social media or support us on Patreon, all of that information will be in the description below. Thanks for listening. 